Okay, in this video, what we're going to do is introduce you guys to the concept of grouping. Grouping is very important for a couple of different reasons when working with scenes in Maya. Number one, if you have multiple objects and you would like to work with all of these objects as if they were one object, then you could simply group them together. For instance, let's say you had a motor and this motor had a bunch of bolts in it, sure. bolts and nuts. You could take all the bolts and nuts and group them together so that you could, perhaps that and let's say like the top of the engine, the manifold or something. Sure. Group all that together then you could treat it as one object and mm -hmm. just move it around. It's very handy. Another reason that grouping is very important is when you start dealing with control rigs and you need to do some fancy things with pivot points. Keep in mind, every object has a single pivot point. That's right. By taking an object and grouping it to itself or taking multiple objects and placing them in a group, you get the group's pivot point that you can then move to some other location as opposed to the center of the object. That's right. In effect, it's a lot like giving an object a second pivot point. That's right. So by doing that, you can give an object a new point in which transformations will occur. That's right. And that's really nice. So let's go ahead and start out by making some objects. So we'll make, let's say, a sphere. And we'll make, I don't know, another sphere. We're just going to move it over. Another sphere. Move it over. And we've always got to have a cone. Why? Just because cones are cool. <laughs> so there we go. Now... As always, let's first start out by looking inside of our hypergraph and see what we've got. So there we are, NURB Sphere 1, 2, 3, and, of course, Mr. Cool Cone number 1. All of these guys are being represented at the moment at the root level of the scene. Mm -hmm. Now, what is a group? A group is really nothing more than a new transform node that is created. It has no associated geometry. And then all of the items that are in the group basically become children of that transform node. It's that simple. So check it out. How do we make a group? Well, let's keep the hypergraph up so that everybody can see what's happening. And I'm going to simply select all four of my objects, as seen here. And we can come up here to edit. And first, I'm going to show you guys how to do it through the, uh, the menu. And then we'll do the hotkey approach. I'll just simply come down to group, which you can see the hotkey right here. It's Control-G. And we'll group it. Now, let's take a look at what's happened. First of all, right now we can see that we've got everything selected. Okay. Right. Now, over here, NURB Sphere 1, 2, 3, and Cone 1 are all children of this object here. This object has no associated geometry. All it is is a transform node. And by default, it's titled Group and Some Number, in this case, Group 1, because it is our first group. Right. So we could, you know, change the name of this. This is our engine. <laughs> if I could spell. Yes. Grouping. Something like that. Yeah. But that's the idea. And now, of course, we can come in here and manipulate all of these guys as if it was just one object. Then we can come in here and rotate them, etc. Okay. In effect, it's working exactly like all of these objects were parented to another object. It is. And at any time, if you need to take a specific object and pull it out of a group, you can just come over here, control, middle click, drag, drop. S the same rules apply that we showed you guys uh, back over with parenting, because that's right. all we have is a hierarchical relationship here. So all I'm going to do is just simply middle click, drag and drop him back into the group, mm -hmm. and there you go. Pretty easy stuff, isn't Very it? Very easy stuff. Now, keep in mind, uh, by default, when you are in the object mode, if I come in here and I select one of these objects, I am not selecting the group. That's right. So that is really important to keep in mind. So it's very simple to come in here and make a mistake where I had wanted to move around, let's say, my engine grouping, but instead I moved around this bolt instead. It's like, whoops, that's mm -hmm. been moved from where it needs to be. So what do we need to do? Well, there's several approaches, one involving our status line, which we'll be talking about a little bit later. I'm going to try to keep this very simple. Right. Another is you could just use your hypergraph to grab your upper level node or your root node. You could use your outliner and, again, same thing, just simply grab the root node. Sure. Or a very quick approach, if you did not have your hypergraph open or your outliner open, would be to simply select an item and hit the up arrow key on your keyboard. And you'll notice it jumped us straight up to engine grouping. What the up arrow key is going to do is walk up your hierarchy. That's right. Now, let me show you guys an, a case inside of Maya where grouping is automatically done for you. It's with a piece of geometry that you guys have probably played with by now. And let's deselect. What I'm going to do from surfaces is I'm going to create a NURBS cube. Bink. So now we've got a NURBS cube. Let me pull it on over here to the side, and let's take a look in the hypergraph. Ooh. Check this out. All we have are a bunch of planes. Plane, 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 
plane, plane, and plane that make up the cube. If I switch over into a shade of view, it makes it a little bit easier to see. All of these different NURBS planes are simply grouped up under the NURBS cube one node. That's Very it. cool. It's that simple. Yeah. Okay, now of course, if you want to go ahead and kill out a group, you just simply select the group, come up here to edit, and you can ungroup it, and you'll notice that it has blown this guy apart. Let's go ahead and simply undo that because we don't need to perform that operation. Sure. So now that we've looked at some very basic grouping, what I'd like to do is go ahead and do a new scene real quick and show you the benefits of grouping with a single object to give yourself additional pivot points. Right. This is pretty neat. So we'll come over here to polygons, create a, a polygonal cube real quick, and let's go ahead and just maybe scale this up a little bit, and we'll switch over to a side view. I'll hit the W2 tool. Uh, w key for my move tool. <laughs> w2. Now, what I want to do is I want this cube to be able to rotate back and forth on its corners down here. Sure. Right now, that's not going to work mm -mm. because of where my pivot point's at. I could, of course, hit the insert key and then move my pivot point down here to the edge, and that's going to work fantastic for this, but what about going the other way? It's not going to work right. So let me undo so that my pivot point is now back in the center. What I want to do is take this object and group it to itself. Mm -hmm. So let's name this object something like box. Now, to group it, I could simply come up here and click on Edit and Group, like such. Or, at this point, let's go ahead and start using hotkeys. I'm going to do Z to undo that. And now I'm going to do Control-G, and that groups the object to itself. Cool. Let's call this something like Rock Back. So with Rock Back, now I have a pivot point. Mm -hmm. The pivot point right now is located down here at the origin. I'm simply going to hit the Insert key, and I'm going to move this pivot point right back there. Boom. Let's try it out. Look at this. Why is it doing this? Because it's following the basic rules of hierarchies. You move the parent, the children must come along. That's right. That's what's happening here. So let's go ahead and undo this. Now check this out. What I want to do is take this Transform node and group it to itself. So I'm going to give myself yet another pivot point. Mm -hmm. So here we go, Control-G. So now we have yet another transform node. Look at our hierarchy. It's growing. Yep. And I'm going to come up here and name this one Rock Forward, like okay. such. And you've probably guessed it. Insert. Move my pivot point over here to the front. Something right about there. Looking pretty good. Hit Insert again, and let's try Rock Forward. So now we can rock forward. Excellent. Now let's get real fancy. I'm going to group this transform node to itself one more time. Mm -hmm. So control G, like such. And we'll go ahead and name this something like box control. Okay. Now, with box control, I'm just going to simply come up here to modify and select center my pivot. Bink. So now that it is centered inside my geometry. Now let's see what we've got. I'll come up here so that I can see everything in a perspective view. I'll hit 5 on the keyboard to shade things up. Of course, we know that if we rotate right now, box control has its pivot point located in the center of the geometry, so we get this rocking back and forth motion. Mm -hmm. If I come down here to rock forward, hey, we can rock forward. Rock back, hey, we can rock back. Now, you got to be careful because of the way the hierarchy works, the way the data is flowing downhill. Because if I rock back like this, and I grabbed rock forward, you'll notice its pivot point did not move. That's right. Because remember, when I rocked back, everything flowed downhill. It didn't go up here to this guy. So you've got to be very careful about how this works. So let's go ahead and undo. So there we are laying flat. So as long as you keep that in mind, you're in good shape. Now, of course, here, check it out. Since this is rolling down, I would be able to go forward like this, come to rock back, and step up if I wanted to. <laughs> but, of course, we've now lost our rock forward pivot. Sure. So let's go ahead and do a couple undos. I'm just pointing out where you could get in trouble if you're not careful in thinking about the way the groups work. But here's what's convenient. Let's go ahead and take box control, and I'm now going to rotate this at an angle. I'm going to come in here and move it maybe over here on the corner of the grid like such. Mm -hmm. Now I'm going to come over here to rock forward. Let's give it a shot. Look at that. Nice. Rocking forward. Rock back. Rocking back. Very, very nice. Very cool. Now, in creating a system like this, since you see how easy it would be to mess up the location of your pivot point, it would be recommended that on box control, you simply create a new custom attribute that's something like roll. Right. And what you do is you would basically establish a set-driven key uh, relationship. This is a reactive relationship between this custom attribute 
and these two nodes right here so that when you adjust this basically what's going to happen is you're going to end up with a cube that will roll backwards and forwards. And in just a couple of sentences Buzz leaves all the new people behind. But that's okay. But that's okay. Because coming up in the animating the scene lesson we will be covering that and I say we'll come all the way back to this box, revisit it and set it up to show you guys exactly what we're talking about. But this is just an example of using grouping uh, just to give yourself new pivot points, right. or at least what seems like new pivot that's points. Right. And so with that, that's pretty much all we need to talk about. Zach, is there anything else you can think about? No, this is great. For basic grouping? So again, basic grouping, just to sum everything up, is nothing more than taking multiple objects, selecting them, hitting Control G, or activating it from up under the edit menu, and then letting Maya create a new transform node, and, make, and Maya will then take all of the selected objects in your scene and make them children of this new transform that's node. That's right. That is a group. And with that, that's going to wrap up this video. Thanks a lot, guys.